hey, welcome back to Clean Cut, where we can talk about the truth about just about anything, as long as we use logic and common sense. This season, we're taking a closer look at the temptations that people have to see if we can figure out why we're tempted to commit sins. People generally commit sins because they're after something they want, and they sin in an attempt to get it. So we're looking over the things people want. Today, riches. Now, the word riches refers to possessions or other things that make a person rich, to wealth, for which the first definition is, definition one, abundance of valuable material possessions or resources. To understand why riches would be desired, therefore, only requires asking what it means for something to be valuable. The long and short of it is that things are more valuable when they're both rare and wanted by a large number of people. This means that if you have something very rare and desirable, a large diamond, for instance, people will be willing to compete with one another to offer better things to you in exchange for it, which is where free markets come from. Of course, if someone just rides up and steals the diamond, the market is no longer free, but that's the kind of thing you have to worry about when you have a lot of wealth. Over the centuries, things of great value, like gemstones, precious metals, artifacts, pieces of expensive art, and of course, land, have ended up tempting people to commit insane acts of savagery against each other in desperate attempts to acquire more of them. Despite the increased danger of being attacked and having your riches taken, many people were eager for greater wealth because, if you have it, you can often get more of the other things you want. Guards can be hired to provide security. Pleasurable experiences are more readily available to the rich. More people will do what you say if you pay them, granting the rich power of a sort, and that in turn leads to fame or, at least in some cases, infamy. As for acceptance, people may not actually accept you just because you're rich, but for a few extra pieces of gold, they'll be willing to pretend they do. The problem is that riches come with a price. The power they have to grant the wishes of the person who has them depends on other people not having them, and therefore being willing to work and make other deals in order to get them. Now a man can be both good and rich by hiring many people to work for him, and so supporting a large section of the community, and not hurt his own fortunes in the process. However, the fact remains, money gets all its power from the needs of the general public, so it's a type of relative power, like the power of Pharaoh that we discussed in the first episode of this season. The dangers of an obsession with money are too numerous to fully describe, but they include a tendency to become miserly and refuse to help others, a tendency to be ostentatious with your wealth and get puffed up and prideful, a tendency to use your position of wealth to strong-arm people into accepting bad deals from you, and to not pay people what their work is really worth, and so on. On top of those, add on all the other dangers associated with every other temptation we've discussed, and more besides, and you might start to see why St. Paul writes to Timothy, For they that will become rich fall into temptation, and into the snare of the devil, and into many unprofitable and hurtful desires, which drown men into destruction and perdition. For the desire of money is the root of all evils, which some, coveting, have erred from the faith, and have entangled themselves in many sorrows. 1. Timothy 6, 9-10 Again, not that desires themselves are bad, but that people can easily be led astray by following certain desires blindly. Wealth is one of the biggest of those desires. So, how should we view wealth? How are we supposed to have or experience wealth? Why do we want it? What's God's plan for it? Lay not up to yourselves treasures on earth where the rust and moth consume, and where thieves break through and steal, but lay up to yourselves treasures in heaven, where neither the rust nor moth doth consume, and where thieves do not break through nor steal. Matthew 6, 19-20 Jesus reminds us that heavenly wealth is more reliable and more valuable than wealth here on earth is, because, among other things, it can't be destroyed or stolen. Also, remember that this is not merely symbolic language. The wealth of God is actual wealth. And may God supply all your want according to his riches and glory in Christ Jesus. Philippians 4, 19 St. Paul wouldn't wish for God to supply people with riches if he didn't think that God could do it. Earth offers us nothing that God doesn't offer much more of. Next time, The Temptation of Sloth. That's all for now, so keep asking questions, and thanks for watching.